deep. So I like the draft a little bit more. More well-rounded, a lot more um, AOE and damage. All right, well, I'm going to bet my first panel MMR points, and I'm going to go for Evil Geniuses. Zai on the support silencer. It's going all the way to the final. So here we go. We're going to heading over to the commentators now to bring us the second game. Can EG close it in two? Well, that is the question which we're looking to find the answer for. EG versus DK, game number two on Tubby one joined by Cinderin. As we come back here, into the game we go for game number two. Cinderin, thoughts quickly, draft laning, what are we thinking? I have no idea. <laughs> My this confidence is, a, is amazing with you This right is now. very creative from both sides. <laughs> so, like the panel said, it's, it's kind of hard to call in an obvious advantage for either side at this point i think uh, i would completely agree with the with the verdict that silencer is going to play a crucial seconds. role in this game because a lot of dk's team fight revolves around of course casting those team fight abilities mm -hmm. silencer is great against timbersaw with last word if he can get that in at crucial moments ice 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 will not be able to chain his abilities correctly uh, and of course the global silence if it comes out before the ship comes in from lanham that could work very well for them on the other side though dk they just have so many ways of dealing with EG's uh, what seems to be a push strat again, which can also go into late game. They've got great mid game push with Prophet, of course, abandoned to keep the heroes going with the Dragon Knight in the front lines. Uh, but DK have great wave clear and a lot of damage overall. Yeah, that they do, man. Both teams have got so many high points. I love the fact that we keep bringing up uh, heroes like the very sick Kunkka the ship and things like this. When you're Kunkka. Also Kunkka. Um, the guy's actually here. His first LAN event, Kunke, is at TI4, so... Sorry, I have to do the Australian inflection. No, even just, if it's not the Australian inflection. Just tell inflection. him, you don't know how to say your name. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, man, it's Kanka. Sorry, just to be, sound a little bit more Aussie. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we have Silence as well as Kanka uh, coming in towards the mix-up here. And then, like, the key, key stump, like, uh, big abilities for the team fights. Obviously, next to Chrono and other things, but... These are the two supports playing big roles. Now, we've got the uh, supports just playing with each other on the bottom lane, so we get an aggro tri lane coming out here from DK, where we have a defensive lane out here from EG. The problem for EG is they're trying to sentry ward up to try and find the dire sentry ward, which is going to be blocking their pull spot. But they've only got one of those wards left here from Zai. So they've got to be very, very careful with their positioning. And the choices could be, it's like, is there a ward inside the lane which is watching us? So do we try and de-ward over on the area where they're currently fighting? Or do they try and look for the pull point instead? Now, MMY is taking a lot of damage here, dropping down to 230 life points, but it's just reflected out. And PPD goes for the shield to start with, just to make sure that Zai's got that protection. I think the main problem for DK in this bottom lane is, I think EG's lane's just flat out better. Like. If you want to initiate into this trial lane that EG have with this kind of trial lane, the only setup you have is Concussive Shot into Torrent, which is unreliable already. Yep. But the other side has a bad Enzophotic Shield, so you can just break the Concussive Shot when you see it flying. You can disengage or you can engage as you please. You're also playing double ranged support, or, or sorry, double ranged hero on the lane against only one ranged hero for DK. So I think EG's bottom lane is a lot better, and it looks like DK agree. They've already chosen to rotate. They'll leave the Void, Skyrath down here. Oh, they're bottom lane. Plan. They're looking right on top of Burning Mates and starts the link, and he has to leave himself away. I kind of also want to flag, like, with the out the kill on the bottom lane, unless Burning is going to get completely over-aggressive. Uh, what's happening up on the top lane? Ice 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 was able to actually drag his creep wave over to towards the Centaur camp. Managed to get a little bit of it gone, but Universe is kind of like forced to come even closer towards the Timbersaw and closer towards what's more dangerous. One, the Timbersaw, and two, the tree line. Even though there's no point up in that timber chain just yet here from Ice Ice Ice, because he knows he can just go straight up against Universe, it's still going to be a mass massive problem for heroes like Nature's Prophet because you don't have the protection of Sprout TP out. He you could use some protection else. right now, I think. There comes the concussive shot. Will there be a torrent from Lanham as well? Universe. He's Easy dodge off to the side. That's, and that's the problem with this combo. Kunkka generally... Kunkka. <laughs> Damn it, Toby. Kunkka uh, generally uh, wants to set up with, uh, with some sort of reliable stun so you can easily land the torrent or disruption from Shadow Demon, something like that. And Skyroth just doesn't have that. Oh, so this is a, a little burning. bit of a weird duo. Uh, yeah, he doesn't even have front. mana for the jump, actually. But. Yeah, but that's what I was looking for PPD to get in front of him to start with the body block. And then Zai can beat into him. Now Burning actually comes back into the engagement. This movement coming up the lane, but Mason will not get there in time. Even with a plasma field, maybe there would be enough damage. He puts the shield up if Mason actually pops underneath the tower. Burning's gone. That's why he has to leave himself away there. Dyer's Evades the attack while up on top attack. lane. We've got Nature's Prophet. Universe is able to TP himself away to safety. With no steal on MMY, they cannot stop him. Yeah. The big story right now of this game, though, I think, is, is the mid lane in which uh, Mushi is 
It's getting a good lead here against Arteezy's Dragon Knight, which is one of Arteezy's better heroes, so DK are definitely going to be happy with how much farm they're getting on the Wind Ranger here, but I'm curious to see what DK are, are going to transition this into. Like, how do you use oh, a farm Wind Ranger mid? He's exactly actually going really aggressive here. We'll go for the Shackle as well! What? That range! Do not was... have the mana for a power shot. That's, that's range, right there. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> now, what's interesting too is that DK, they realized that this bottom lane isn't working out for them, so I think it's a good call for them to rotate around, but the thing is, the lane they're reinforcing is Timbersaw versus Prophet, which is a lane that Timbersaw just traditionally wins. Dyer's the way Prophet wins the lane is usually by attack. harassing the enemy hero with trance. When you have reactive arm, it's basically helping you out. So it's, it's kind of pointless to harass the Timber, mm -hmm. so it just gets free farm. And this trade-off, I don't think is... Uh, I, I would say this favors EG for sure. They are holding down the, the Void, Radiant's who can, of course, be a good offlane hero. Attack. But the trade-off is farm on Timber and Windranger, who, yes, they will do well in the mid-game, but when you go later on into the game, I think EG, EG might have got, a, got off to a better start here. I just want to flag an item which is over on Universe. He's currently just walking around with a very early chainmail, so we're not going to be seeing a hand of Midas rush. More than likely, he's going to be building up the mag now. <laughs> There's a lot of pressure up on the top lane. Or a medallion, that's another option too. But that means they've got to be looking to really capitalize on having that. Radiance and that will be so easy. We're going to see, this might actually just turn into a tower trade. So DK will secure this tower, the first tower of the game, five minutes in. Mm -hmm. See who they give Radiance the last hit to. It's going to be almost fallen. denied there by Universe. Oh, actually Adam, pursuing Ladam! Adam, what are you... He was really getting up in the face right then of Universe, and he's gonna have a crack. Torrent will go very unreliable. Actually, went X for the second, then the shield instantly does more damage to land than he actually did over towards the Abaddon. And Ice 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 will just chain himself away to safety. And the bottom tier one tower will now go down. Burning can't get to Nylon, unfortunately, being a melee hero, can't just snipe it from range. So it's a it's a tower for a tower. Yeah, pretty uh Pretty, pretty silent game so far, apart from the towers falling. Uh, Mushi still doing a great job here in mid. He will actually start to put a little bit Radiant's of pressure on the mid tier one here with, uh, with Arteezy being forced slightly back. Waiting for his bottle to come uh, come back out on the courier as Ice Ice going for a dive top lane, almost bringing down PPD here. But now he's out of mana, has to go back, and they're leaving Zai to get a little of experience top, which I think is a great call here. Get Silencer as a support kind of falls off heavily in the early parts of the mid game if you don't have global silence. There are a lot of other supports that can be very useful without levels, but Silencer is one of those where you really need the ultimate. Of course, alternative heroes that do great in the, without level 6 would be someone like Jakiro or Earthshaker who can actually do a lot with their spells. Silencer I wouldn't really put in that category. Mm -hmm. And uh, EG's been really on top of the runes there. Universe just sent one tree in down south to not deny off the rune. Arteezy was actually looking for the rune up on top, but unfortunately for him, he knew he didn't have enough life points to come in close, but then Dragon Tail stunned. Mushi cursed up. This could be first blood. Right oh, now. the he block! Mana, he's body blocking him in. And now the concussive shot from MMY. Trying to force him back. Mushi still with mana and starting to get bottle charges off. He's looking for a shackle, unable to latch it onto Arteezy though. He does a couple breathe fire for his troubles. But he had a very quick moment then when Zai possibly could have taken the kill. But there was no support coming in. In fact, Prophet's already faking the TP over the over the river now. Dyer's middle tower. And similar is to under how they attack. gave Zai a little bit of experience in the top lane. It's now gonna be Lanham for DK oh, bottom getting lane. Low space. Bottom lane, the chrono's off. Mason, Timber chain through, there's your first blood. And the Razor will go down here. Burning and Ice 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 comboing up. As good the rest rotation. Of EG came and kept their attention elsewhere in the middle lane. Very good rotation there, securing the first blood. The question is what it's going to cost them in the mid lane here. Is EG are already oh, banging on the tower? Oh, that was really close, but now Mushi has exposed himself. Oh, oh, oh. Kill goes the other way. EG takes one up, and now in comes Ice 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 right in the back there of the DK. He's looking for a courier kill. One more attack. It's not enough. Courier lives oh. at 11 life points. It's a good thing he's not affected by poison. And they're going to back themselves up. So a one-for-one -one trade. The two mid solos go down, but the tier one town for DK does remain up in the mid. Slight win for DK, perhaps here. It's it's kind of hard to conclude anything on that. They will be getting this tower soon enough, EG, I think. But at the very least for DK, they didn't lose it just yet. And with the gank bottom burning is starting to get a little bit more space, we might see him going for an early. Or it's not an early Midas, but all things considered, it could be finished pretty early here. He has the gold for the recipe in a moment. <laughs> and giving Lanham all the space they did, he almost has level six on the Kunka, which is a very very good level six support. Don't <laughs> underestimate how powerful he is with level two X Mark. Ghost Ship, as well as the Torrent. If he has full mana, he's even getting Arcade Boots now. Mana is not going to be a problem. I wanted to flag just a very, very small thing, but uh, Arteezy coming in towards that middle lane. Mushi saw the TP on the way in, so what he basically did was power shotted Arteezy the second he arrived, and Arteezy the second he arrived, after the damage was done, he actually used his bottle charge. Went straight back up to full life as well as mana because he used his breathe fire at the same time. Very, very efficient movement coming out there from Arteezy in the mid up against Mushi. 
All the details matter. They're going to be using whatever they have against each other here as... It is a pretty high-profile match, I guess that's fair to say. Of course, the winner, correct me if I'm wrong, the winner of this matchup is guaranteed top three. Since if you go to the winner's correct. bracket finals, the loser of that will face you are off against the correct. Yeah. So they're playing for a lot right here. A top three finish guaranteed for the winner, of course, will be meeting Newbie. It also the means like and you, final match you have the potential to have the easy path to the grand final. I say the easy path. Radiance you're still like if you win two best attack. of threes, it's the two biggest best of threes of your life. You win that, you're straight into the grand final, and more importantly, you have two days to rest out now. Middle lane, there's a bit of seal coming out. And RT, he wants to try and turn the this one into Dragon Tail with Dragon Force to get the range of Mushi. Oh, just but hit level six. This is ball. trouble. In they come, and well, they're getting closer, but RT, who try again, the ship's on the way in from Lanham, as you said, but it's actually going to be a complete fail boat. Going in between the EG lineup and Ice Ice Ice, they're trying to defend on top of this tier one tower, but it's so difficult when PPD's there to help them. Now yeah, this tower is gone. Fortified. Yep. They fortify though. They still try to defend. Torrent spam, whatever else they've got. At least they buy time for the hand of Myers farming void in the bottom lane, but that mid tier one tower Dyer's is gone and they're it's a little bit so, separated. So hard to deal with a dragon egg within a baton behind him. So the one thing DK has, they have a lot of uh, DK have a lot of spread damage, but as far as single target goes, not just yet. Burning will need to get big for that so they can kill off the Dragon Knight with that. And if they don't a single target, Arteezy can just go in the front with a Baton behind him, and all this spread damage doesn't really matter. Torrent here from Lanham is going to connect, but the haste already taken here by Arteezy, so... Second tower of the game for EG now brought down. What's the trade-off? Burning got his Midas, a little bit of more free farm down here in the bottom lane. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for Burning to be a little bit more mobile here. I think they need the Chronosphere to be used a couple of more times to secure themselves a little more advantage. And especially if they can get Ice 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 off to a good start, he is perhaps the da actually the real damage they have against Dragon Knight. Don't underestimate the Whirling Death against Strength Heroes, it is very powerful. At the same time, might also be the reason why Dragon Knight was picked up as opposed to like the really, really high life point style heroes. Because that Dragon Blood's actually some good protection against him too. That's up against the Timbersaur, of course. And one major thing I'm still searching for is the combination Dyer's of Skywrath. Skywrath and Void. You don't have that level 6 out from Skywrath just yet. So you don't have the Chrono directly into ultimate and 100% secured kill. It just doesn't exist there. They need to it's have true. that combo. They've... I think in both these games so far, MMY has actually sacrificed himself a lot in the early game in terms of levels. Last game he was also very low level on the Shadow Mason's Shaman. too far. But this time maybe he can get some experience out of this. It will be, it's really important for DK that this gank does not fail. Yeah, they, they need to hit everything they've got. The major problem is the fact the PVD is just sitting on the side. So the second they try to initiate in over on Mason, who's still got like just over 1100 life points, you're going to have a real difficult time finishing the execution. Oh, this could be perfect timing for them, though. PPD just left. He TP top here to start to help out Arteezy push out this lane and put some pressure there against uh, Ice Ice Ice. So should they find Mason here? The ping's actually coming out from Mushi. Will he be able to catch him? He's not in range for Doesn't X. Doesn't look like... Oh, he took the wrong way. Mushi's coming in for the shackle. And that's going to be Mason locked in the trees. Where it's most definitely not safe. Pushed up in the air and they commit the ship. They actually had to do that with the magic wand charge going off. Now Ice 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 up towards the top lane, looking at PPD, Sharkram off mark. Dyer's he's still got himself a timber chain, but he's saving attack. this just in cases. And actually walked to the radiant side of the of the wave, because Artezi is trying to solo up the tier one tower. So Ice 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 is playing this cre the creep skip game, and the, the rest radiant of EG is trying to force out the tier one tower. Attack. But no backdoor regeneration for tier one towers. Dyer's they know this is possible, but they're also attack. underneath the DK tier one tower. TP support could change this up very, Radiant's very quickly, but it looks like DK attack. just wanting the trade. Lanham, Burning, Radiant MMY, all attacking that T1 tower in the bottom lane after the T1 tower has gone down. Yeah, they're not getting the trade though. With that Nature's Prophet Ultimate, EG get a 1 for 0 trade here on towers, so... Good... Yeah, good call from EG there to, to actually go for this rotation with the Abaddon to secure the top lane, and... Well... Where are, we, where are we going for EG here? You, you were right about Universe. He did go for the fast mech and Ice, down. Ice, yeah, Ice, Ice, Ice going in for this. I don't know if they have the damage to actually bring him down. Universe! Oh, really, really close. With the urn damage ticking him down as well, there's the urn which is on the Timber Saw. So we have a fighting build coming out from Ice, Ice, Ice. Before he finished up the Bloodstone, he wanted to have the urn charges. Um, but oh, he almost rotation. had enough damage to get through him, but you're right. Lanham has the shit. So dead. <laughs> he is so gone. Look at, look at Lanham. He's gonna give him a turret as well, and the ship to boot. So nice. Zai goes down, and Conker takes the kill. Four to one for DK. But there.
barely ahead in this game. Yeah. A slight bit of, uh, well, a decent bit of experience, but the gold still favoring EG, of course, with the tower advantage they have. There are three ta two towers ahead, pardon me. Mm -hmm. So, again, a fairly even early game like in the, in the previous game we had, and I'm, I'm curious to see where DK go from here, actually. I'm, for me, EG seem a little more obvious what, what choice they're, uh, what they want to do with their strategy, but this third pick Wind Ranger from Mushi that they picked up for DKI, I'm curious to see what their plan is here. Oh, we haven't even seen an item pick up from apart from the mech, so if you're getting a mech, you're looking to do early team fight. It's literally that simple. And the fact you got Urn and mech already up, it means DK need to group up. You have more than four kills to make this item build really worthwhile. So it doesn't exist right now. I suppose like, it's still, hey, hey, we're, we're, four, we're four kills ahead, but this is looking good for DK, especially when Arteezy tries to fight directly up against the Timbersaw, which he knows he won't be able to kill. At least not solo. They're gonna X, oh. Torrent, BPD, he's got ulti. So the one thing they could do is attempt to trigger the ultimate, but that's all they're gonna get out of it. Yeah, they don't really have a solution to the Abaddon. I think that's one of the concerns here for DK. The, oh, well, they have one, I guess. Or, well, with a little bit of a stretch, maybe two. You could Chronosphere him up so he can't cast anything, and you have the Silence from the Skywrath, but I don't think he's going to expose himself to the Silence. So you're going to need the Void to jump in for the Chrono, or you're going to need to burst down whoever you catch from the Chrono really fast, but I think at this point, DK do not have the damage they need, and another thing we haven't talked too much about, Timbersaw and Void actually don't have the best of synergy. Timbersaw wants to jump in on top of the target, mm -hmm. and you can't do that inside the Chrono. I the think this is a, another thing... You the Chakram, but that's basically it. Yeah, and that's, that's really underwhelming compared to the entire kit of Timbersaw. And DK, I think, ran a very similar draft to this earlier in the tournament with, uh, with Timber and Void on the same team. I think they lost that game as well. well it's another Midas. Yeah, let, the, let them continue, man. Let them continue. It's one for either side, one for Universe, and one over for Burning. And as far as other major items coming up, I'm still just watching the timing on this Bloodstone for Ice Ice Ice. Because he needs one more item, and he's basically there. But he can pull the energy booster out from his arcane boots. And then you're gonna see DK That's a really fairly early bloodstone actually. Oh, bottom lane. Well, yeah. it's just a bait from Zai. Uh, okay. Yeah, that Shack is a little bit off mark. And now, oh, Ice Ice Ice, he got silenced up after he came in. There's no whirling death. He's got no timber chain, and he's down. Ice 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 picked up from the bottom lane. Universe able to get the sprout off, and Mushi, he's teeping himself away to safety. He's out. Mushi, knowing how to escape from EG, has proved it in game number one. And happening again here in game number two. So but they, they did still lose the Timber Soul. So get one kill quick. for the global. I think EG are not happy with oh, this. Oh, Chrono is coming out from Burning and Skyrath. There's no ultimate. He's keeping the seal over Arteezy and the ship from line of everything they've got they throw into the DK. But that means they don't have it for the bottom lane. The, I don't think Musha can defend this at all. The mech, the early mech from Universe being popped here. They have great pushing potential. Of course, the drums by Mason could be used here as well for a little bit of extra attack speed. But. Yeah, overall, if they don't get the tower here, they at least get a lot of damage done to it. Yeah, even to Mushi, that plasma field was able to connect just then. And now the TP's cursed. Nice shackle this time coming up from Mushi on a PPD side. Getting spread it up right now, but there's enough life with Skyrat trying to take it away, and they got him! The TP unable to complete PPD's ultimate will protect him as well. So they're both down, well, one's down to safety at least, and the other one going down almost out of safety. So they lost two thirds of the tower. Pretty good defense by DK, I think. I was expecting that tower to go down, considering how much momentum EG had going for them there, but didn't manage to finish it off. The kill on Arteezy, I think, particularly important right now to delay his BKB a little bit, which it looks like he's going for. He would have had it by now if he hadn't died there, I think. Very close to that. Mm -hmm. So, And that's a good item against DK when you look at it. They actually can't kill Ice, anyone Ice. in BKB. He's having a crack at Mason right now. He's still got that ultimate up, but Ice 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 is going to walk his way out. The urn was ticking down Mason as well, but... Ice 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 knew he was kind of running out of mana and extra Radiant's abilities to get kills here, so focus on making sure that uh, the raid has to go back to base, which means the tier 1 tower gets to be brought down by Focus Fire of Mushi. And of course, the creep wave. I'm really not sure how DK are going to handle when the BKB start coming up on the Radiant side in this game. With Dragon Knight getting the first one very soon, the only source of damage they have when he's in BKB is Focus Fire from Wind Ranger and a bit of damage from the Void. Their entire Timber Saw as well as Kunkka combo is built around the enemy not being magic immune. And they don't have a good way of forcing out the BKB either. The, the only real way they force it is by jumping in the Void and well, That's fine. Mid. Yep, that's why. Mushi's going to look for a good shackle right now. And of course, the Void when he TPs in, we're going to watch for that Chrono too. DK are feeling very confident here and with good reason. He actually saw Ice Ice Ice. He was back at base and he knew he had to get out there to fight straight away. So he actually regenerated up his life points and popped a clarity. So the rest of the work will be done on the way back out to the mid tier 2 tower.
because his TP was also on cooldown, so that wasn't an option. But look where Zai is. He's so far back. He's just sitting down here in the little tree line in the corner here to make sure... Yep, back into the box. Uh, just so he can get the ultimate off. Now, having a crack in middle lane. There goes your global stars, but Artizi already been picked up and thrown down with the ship. The curse of the stars been thrown towards Lanham, and now faces the boy, jumps in. Two-man chrono. Mason getting nuked down by MMY. The move over to Artizi with the shield was over him. Then it's difficult to kill the Shackle and Ample Lash there from Mushi and burning. He has to backtrack the Batman. They actually kept him alive long enough. Artizi triggers the BKB. He's already low on life. Looking for another kill. Mushi again being cursed up. Shackles coming off cooldown from him. They spread on the high ground. Ice 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 able to timid clear his way out of this one. He's locked in position. They bring him down with the last breathe fire from Artizi. And DK lose another tower here. Radiant's top it's tower kind of a time attack. game right now where DK just want to want to stay in it, but should they start losing their map control Lineup. against a lineup with Prophet, it's going to be really scary for them to go anywhere outside the map. And we were watching PPD was just sitting in the middle lane. Didn't care. He's got ultimate, so he just sat there farming up. Didn't care if Mushi or Lanham came after him. Realized with the amount of control that those two have, they actually can't kill off PPD. And the damage they've got, they definitely can't kill off PPD. So one thing, another thing we haven't talked so much about is, should we go late game again, like in the previous game? Do you want to start counting cores? <laughs> I, it, Last time around we had an Ursa, this time we have a Kunker. The problem with the late game in this one is that you can start counting cores, but the main man in the late game that's going to make any kind of major difference is Universe. Universe is going to be your, is going to be your primary guy. He's, he's a guy who built mech as well as now going in for an Orchid with a double rogue, which is a rather unusual way of going in for your Orchid build. Um, but the fact you've actually got oh, this... A shackle oh, on our easy. Right. He doesn't have enough damage. Even with the power shot and focus fire... He's going to have to probably BKB TP soon if Mushi keeps going for this because there is backup coming in. Mm. Kind of a mind game here. No, never mind. When you're running with a Prophet also on the field, you've got to be careful. Like, I know he's got mech as well as bottle. Me one up on top lane. There's Universe oh, getting nuked down. And that's that call. Combo. That was the combo we talked about almost 10 minutes ago. Just a simple chrono in into the Mystic Flare, and you know 100% that, that that hero is going to go down. Actually, doesn't, even the DK <laughs> should technically almost be 100%. 20 minute Midas on Razor. What is with this? They're playing for the late game. Yeah. We're in for the long haul for this game, I think. Neither team looks to be in a position to end this remotely soon. Oh, or, well, if it is, it's EG, but EG with their is item build. Ready. Oh, man, actually, that mana spend there from Arteezy. He's still got enough for his dragon form into a stun. And he's got six one charges. That's also the reason why he's probably spraying it out. He has the rest of EG coming up behind him. It's a five man movement from EG on the bottom lane. And Ice 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 with a Chakram is keeping him out. Or as much as he possibly can. That Bloodstone regeneration is really nice. Now on TV, he gets a little Mushi. He's already used wind run, so it's difficult to actually land on him. And he's got no, no matter for a mech. He can't use it. All charging up, he's still short. He goes down to the silencer. The ship kept the rest of EG out. And, uh, well, I Ice Ice happy to temper chain himself away Dyer's to safety as the tier 2 tower takes fallen. a fall. Burning is continuously farming up on top. He doesn't want to come back. There's no chrono for 27 seconds. Not easy. He's in very, very deep on Lanham with a plasma foot on free fire. Lanham stick charges. Not enough to keep him in. And ET, they're attack. up on the high ground. 21 Dying minutes in. Minus or no attack. minus. It's pretty amazing to see how they're playing this. They're, they're building a 20 minute Midas on Razor, and then they're like, okay, guys, we've got Midas. Let's push. We have our <laughs> shit guys. Six seconds on chrono. Burning, they're trying to get a little bit more space for him. They can turn and try and find this one. MMY, he's got his ultimate up as well. So they can nuke down. He's already attack. half life and the high side size. Dropping very, very low. The bottom tier three tower almost gone. Dead to rise it is now. Now the boy jumps in. Three man chrono. Artizi primary focus here. Where is MMY's ultimate? He's not using it. The shield came up. And the combo was never there from the sky breath. So now Chrono is down again. Excellent global silence from Zai. They couldn't they couldn't pull it off. They jumped in. It was a great chrono. Immediate counterplay from Zai. It was almost like EG wanted to get caught there. Yeah. They knew if the moment they get the, the global silence off, again, the physical damage isn't there yet for DK. So if they're global, they can't really fight. And I was saying this could be a long game, and the reason was he picked up that Midas. Like, their, their lineup is actually tailored to start pushing here, but the Midas made me think that EG want to go for the late game. But you know what? They're like, this is a really intelligent way of playing. It's like, we know we're ahead, and we actually think we're strong enough to push without items that are valuable right now. So we're going to build for the later stage in the game when we need a bigger lead than the one we have right now, which is to get the racks and the tier 4 later on, so... So you know when your timing push, push like comes that, at 25, like you have like an Agadim Scepter over a Mason kind of example? Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty close right now. The Midas definitely hasn't paid for itself just yet, but I'm imagining, yeah, let's see. We're going to be looking at oh. some minutes still before it has, but if they don't need it right now, I mean, what's the issue? 
My major thing I'm still looking at is the fact the DK. Okay, the Bloodstone's great for the Timber Sword. The regeneration with eight charges is pretty dead. But there's no kills coming in. We have an urn and we have a Bloodstone. Both work when ISIS Ice is alive and around kills. And so far, DK don't really have an opening for that. Not unless they're really not getting a bad trade. Look at Mushi. Just like, oh, he had vision oh, there. He's looking around. The Timber Chain will come up. Universe, the main charge comes up. It's not enough. And PPD him very, very close. Mushi making the most out of that new Maelstrom over on him. Some extra damage. That ward right there. That's a kill. <laughs> Someone's asking for help. And TK's gonna push in through the bottom lane now. Ice 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 can give very, very quick momentum in towards that tier 2 tower. Radiance bottom and this is something which EG can't attack. really ignore. Because Ice 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 just comes up, he takes, takes up a creep wave, so the reactive armor charges are already up, but it's not a full maximum because he doesn't have level 4 in it. But he knows that if EG initiate on him, he's going to be very, very healthy. Now, Mason comes in with the end of his ultimate showing. And the rest of DK just back up, forcing a TP out from Arteezy and buying more space for Burning, who's got a BKB, Hand of Midas, Mask of Madness, and will be looking for a damage dealing item coming up next. And al almost in front of the, uh, the net worth of Arteezy. Oh my god, where did this come from? <laughs> he, he bought it almost... Well, he didn't even direct. He, he, he built one urn and the treads before he finished up the Aghanims over on Zai, and that's level 2 yeah. ultimate as well. This is the position for support with a 24 minute axe on on someone so who is generally a pretty poor farmer unless you play him in that position one role isn't fast at farming the jungle dpd's in trouble on bottom lane x marks torrent they're waiting out as long as they possibly can have to let the shield trigger out but again who, how are they supposed to be killing oh he missed on? the chain oh he missed it he's in trouble he's in wild trouble curse the sun's gonna be there timber chain he's got a cool in two seconds the ship's coming in and hits on side and they're keeping the important one out the man who can oh, the great torrent, torrent from Lanham. the great support coming in meanwhile in middle lane Mushi as well as MMY battling up against Mason and Burning is still farming and pushing on top while the bottom lane are they actually turning to try and fight on this one nope they're TPing out and they'll let Burning finish the tier 2 down top, top lane that was a pretty big distraction from DK that they managed to pull so many heroes down there Radiant's they secure themselves a tier 2 for free and almost a tier 1 in mid. This is a great play from them and this is the kind of stuff they need. When EG has a pushing lineup or such great teamfight presence as they do right now, you need to try to split them up so they don't get to reach your base, which is exactly what they're trying to do right now with three heroes bottom. But they Radiant's can't afford to send their entire team down there with Ice Ice pushing mid and Burning who just pushed top. They have a little bit of defensive work to do first and they're actually just giving away their tier 1 mid here. Radiant Pretty surprising that EG are, are just willing to sacrifice Radiant's this, even using the Glyph, but no one has the TP to go for the deny. So. Really knowing the timing of all of this, like Radiant's the difference between this fallen. push and the last push is one EG had more numbers pushing in through the bottom lane, and the second thing was you didn't have Chrono. There was no Chrono from DK, so they couldn't just fight straight away. And that was the reason why EG got away with so much. But DK, they came back with a Chrono this time around, Ooh, and they're, they're ready the to flank. fight. And it's a really, really smart move here. They smoke up and they move around. This observe ward from the Radiant side. It's still up on the cliff, so they'll see people behind him. Ice 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 is holding for the front lines. Not easy. Stuns on Mushi, but the flank's coming in. Zai, they're looking for the silencer. They need him. He does. Oh, oh Noble! Straight away with the Chrono. BKB protects Burning. He's just bashing down on top of Zai. He's not even fighting his out of his Chrono. He's using the build of a Razor. He took so much. The eye of the storm gonna work, guys. Ice Ice Silence up, locked in position as well. There's no casualties yet for EG. Universe is also being silenced up, but he's gonna back up and then looking to go up. The melee racks. They need the creep wave to arrive, but look where the creep wave's going. MMY. Oh, what a play from MMY. Pull the creep wave down. Universe is coming in. He'll put the sprout as well as the orchid out. But this is worth it. The shackle is there. The Zori has actually followed Mushi. He shackled all the way from the base just then. Arteezy, he's on top of Mushi. The silence is there. They get themselves a kill. Ice, 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 the Torrent again going to work here from Lanami, doing some heavy lifting here for the DK lineup, but then he is still finds some collateral kills. Mason is more now with the cast shot as well as the Chakram, X marks spot. Gonna be pulling him back right now, but he's shielded up by the LOA. Protection is just so high for EG. That Chronosphere, if that would have clipped the, the Silencer, that would have been a lot better, but also surprising for me that... Who's that? That was burning. So the yep. Chrono didn't hit Silencer, and the global had already been used, and he goes for that target. Instead yep. of getting someone inside the Chrono, bashing him down and securing a kill, he goes for arguably the least important kill. Since the global was already used, it didn't really matter. Yep. So a little bit of a weird choice from burning there to not prioritize one of the other heroes. I'm not sure who he could have gone for, though. That's kind of the problem <laughs> playing against DG's lineup. They're all so damn tanky. Especially like when you have Nature's Prophet who can come in range, then yeah. you're like, you Prophet you could maybe kill, he just buys back and comes in. Yeah. Yeah.
But when you got LOA also, like if, you, if, if you hit LOA outside the Corona, he's just going to shield up whoever's there, heal him up as well. This was the combo, which like it was brought up during the drafting stage. You know when the Corona comes off, you need to, to basically kill someone off straight away. And the LOA stops that completely because he gives you health and he gives you protection and even gives you some bounce damage back again. With all of these things there, the Void make it's very, very difficult for him to get like a straight up kill. Top tower and Burning, a Maelstrom is there, but he needs more than this. He so definitely does. I, I don't even know if Maelstrom was the right choice in this game, because again, I think it's not magical damage they're lacking. They need something physical so that they can actually control Dyer's this Dragon Knight who's going in front. But then fallen. again, what, what would you build? Arteezy has 20... 37 armor? Okay, that's quite a lot, and 1700 health, so... Once he's in BKB, you're actually not going to kill him no matter what item Burning has right now. So yep. perhaps this is a better choice for now, and then you just need to ignore the Dragon Knight and try to kill the other heroes. There is there is no way you're killing the DK unless if you chrono him without BKB on. Then you can spell burst him, and then the Maelstrom could be useful. Yep. Well, everyone's going to back up for now. We're still only sitting at 18 kills for almost a 30-minute game here, and you could just see... Even just the games today from the, from the semi-finals, you've seen just how different these battles are. Sometimes it's just all about, about decision-making. Hold the line and make sure you have a good fight and don't make big mistakes. Oh, it's easy with the dragon fall. Oh, they forced Ooh. up him the wrong way! He needed to go forward, he went to the side, they dragon tail an illusion of Mushi. And now they've used Frost Dragon Form. They want to go high ground, but there's only one creep with them. Even another Wind Ranger Illusion being running around the back end, and it's a fake. Oh, obviously. the ward immediately, or not immediately, place. This has actually been there for about four minutes. Not scouting out EG very nicely here. Well, there's no backdoor region because they went in through the mid before, which means he can keep the attack going, but a good shackle on Arteezy. Amazing. Ice, ice, ice. Now the Chrono jump in and got PVD as well as Universe. And look at him, he's focusing down the LOA, but the ulti will trigger. Mason, time up from burning. He tries some more space here. Ice, ice, ice. Chains up the BKB when protecting but he gave so much damage to Mason and they come back into the fight. Mushi, low on life, line him caught in the trees, down to rights and they focus on the racks. The Shark is still in the middle of nowhere. Ghost Storm, the buyback actually comes from DK, TP to the tier 2 tower. They'll take some time before Artizi can arrive. But I think the primary purpose is right now capitalized by Skyrise down while Chrono is down while the Kunk is also on the sidelines. And another great global coming out from the Silence of my side. And again, a weird Dying target for Burning. Yep. He gets the Chrono and he focuses he the, the, the Abaddon, who he definitely cannot kill. I mean, sure, you forced out the uh, the Borrow time, but it didn't even bring him down. So it was basically <laughs> wasted time. And DK are now in a lot of trouble. Yeah, EG is going to force this out. 17 seconds till the Orn Burning. Silent stuff, but look at Arteezy. He's just man fighting him up. The shackle from Mushi is nice, but it's not enough to stop the kill. And Arteezy. Backing up, he sealed as well. The Void, he bought back into this game. This means to be enough if EG can get out without having any collateral kills. And he even Mushi got the tower with the trance. Wow. They're Die. getting everything. Good torrent. Now, maybe there could be a follow up. Ice, ice, ice. They jump in with the Skyrise Mage Ultimate. And Silencer is it? <laughs> it's just straight buybacks. They do not want to stop this one. Arteezy's ulti is coming off cooldown now. And Mason just needs some mana. And they're good to go. They can just go again up through mid. Yeah, and the Chrono is they will be good to go too, though. So. Oh, man. And, um, really caught out. Again, that four star. He's got no buyback. He can't afford it. With no ship, this is going to be a really difficult fight for DK. That's another lane. I, I don't Dyer's think they stand a chance without the ghost ship. They, they can't survive these fights. And if they can, they can't kill anyone. So Arteezy will just lead the charge. Yep. He's not next to any trees, so Ice Ice is not that scary. There's no Mystic Flare. They, they, can't actually, they can't actually nuke anybody down, even if they get caught inside the Chrono, let alone they haven't had much success with that beforehand. But still 24 seconds until Conqueror is up. The DK ultimate form is now halfway through its duration. Gets a stun over on MMY. Wow, that's a lot of damage. Just takes the kill. It's like he doesn't care about DK. They're just heroes on the map, but they, they, they attack like creeps against this DK. And now Mason comes up high ground too. Where is this man's ultimate? He's still short of mana. Five more mana and he can let it rip. And now he can let it rip. But he's also five gold away from having an Aghanim Scepter. He's letting out easy do heavy lifting. Now the boy jumps in. Chrono, he's attacking Mason. It's not enough damage on him. Even with the BKB, Mason only goes down a half life. And they go in the crowd. Universe gets two in time and the ship, the torrent. Oh! And there it comes in from Lanham. 
maybe the savior here for DK, but it's not really enough. Ice 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 locked him the trees, fourth up actually breaking it, he denies himself with the Bloodstone, but they've lost the mid racks. The buyback's coming out from the Tempestor. He can look towards PPD with the X marks. Where is it? Who is he going for? Dragging them back, and it's going to be on Universe. No TP yet. Now he gets his attempt, but not enough. They are still, however, a mid racks and a bottom racks up here, EG. They may have had some losses, but it's worth it, especially with the buybacks coming out from DK. EG's decision making in this game is absolutely phenomenal. They're making all the right calls about when to go. These buybacks might seem like absolute, you know, rage buybacks, but they make perfect sense in every situation. They buy back instantly because they know they have an advantage that they can force. They immediately go into mid lane, they take the second lane of barracks, and at this point, I don't know how DK can possibly come back into this game. EG have played their strategy beautifully. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Even if you want to focus the silencer now, the guy feels like he, he bought a Ghost Scepter. So Void, Mr. Physical Damage, can't really do anything up against him. And Wind Ranger, who's also like turning into a physical damage because the power shot's not enough damage, also can't kill off Zai. So they can't focus him. And <laughs> you saw him. Burning was inside that corner for the full duration. There was little time lost. He attacked directly into the Razor, and Mason tanked the entire thing. And that was before he actually has the Aghanim Scepter, which now he does. How do you kill him? I don't think you can. It's a big problem that DK have right now, is that they simply lack damage. They, they've got decent control, they've got a lot of AoE, like AoE damage, but the single target just isn't there. It's, the only thing they really have is the Skywrath ultimate, but it just Radiant's hasn't been enough in this game so far. And if, if EG managed to get this, I think that could just be game. With an Aegis, it's going to be pretty much impossible for DK to fight into this. I wonder if they're going to give the Aegis to TZ here, so he can just go frontline. Dragon Knight generally isn't the best Aegis carrier, but this is a transformation here, and it does indeed look like they will be giving it to Mason instead, and Roshan just carry on with his Eye of the Storm the in the range of the Tier 3 tower top. It should be pretty easy. And wow, EG. They're looking like they want some of that top 3. Man, they're, they're looking absolutely fantastic right now. They just have to finish the job without getting caught out. And they could go directly in to the grand, uh, to, to the winner's bracket final at least. But the top lane push is now coming. So Arteezy up towards the high ground. The mid lane's already pushed in, so no backdoor regen again. And the smoke movement coming out from DK. They're pretty damn close. Burning is trying to stay very much undercover here. But Mason's already triggered off the ultimate. In range of the tower, there's your boy. We got Hex! The second he jumped in, they can kill him off. The global silence burning. He BKBs Kronos, but he's already dead. Prophet kills him off. Ice 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 is trapped outside. MMY, he tries to go on Universe, but he just gets obliterated. Three heroes down. The top ranks will go as well. And that's G EG is through the winner's bracket final. They will play next. And DK, a big pride out of China with Malaysia and Singapore influences, find themselves being locked, knocked down into the place where teams are eliminated from the international, where no team wants to be. But EG and DK come out. Still good sports across the board, but EG's confidence gives them a 2-0 victory over that of DK. And in front of their home crowd to boot, these guys would be so happy. With